Hello everyone and welcome to this edition of Whimsy Wednesday. I decided before sending this week's hats off to the post office, I would do a little hat 101 or frequently asked questions. Assisting us today will be a dome crown hat and a tapered crown hat. Now both of these hats, of course, already have new owners. When I finish with this video, I will get them boxed up and they'll be ready to head out. But they're a perfect teaching opportunity because it's not very often that I have two undecorated waiting to head out at the same time. I also have one that I'm working on. So why don't we get to some of the questions I get most often. I took those questions and wrote a little summarized list. And I also asked a few weeks ago if there was anything else I should cover. So hopefully this video will cover most of those questions. I am sticking to straw hats during the Civil War era. I will cover straw bonnets and some other millinery in another video. But for now, let's do this little focus. All right, believe it or not, one of the most common questions I get is which is the front of the hat? I love when I get this question because that means somebody's been looking really closely and can't quite figure out where the end is. So if you look at the very edge of the brim, you follow that around, you're going to be looking for the raw edge. And it's right here above my finger. Where is it? Right there. It is that difficult to see. This edge goes in the back. All right, so on this hat, this is the front. And you do see how the front dips down as well as the back, okay? So over on the tapered crown, here is that raw edge, making this the back and this the front, all right? Maybe we should cover the difference between the dome crown and the tapered crown. All right, so the dome crown is in fact a dome shape. All right, this kind of mimics the shape of the head. This is still very shallow. This crown is still three inches or less. The original block that I have is very, very shallow. If you turn the hat to the side, you're gonna see that the brim is shaped and while the brim itself is fairly flat in this case, the arc is visible on the side where the front and back do dip. Now this curve is held in place by a wire that is here at the edge. And you're gonna notice that my hats and bonnets all have covered wire. Now if you look at original pieces, you're gonna see wire that is both covered and uncovered. I choose to cover my wire because it's going to help your hat or bonnet last longer. Okay, let's move over to the tapered crown. Now this tapered crown has an ovular top. Um, not a dramatic oval, just a subtle oval. And there is a slight taper from the base of the crown to the top. And I think you can see that from the front and the sides. Now this brim is not as straight as the one on the, the dome crown. While the tapered crown can have a nice straight brim, this one has a slight curve on the edge. And if you turn it from the side, you can see that fashionable curve where it dips in the front and the back. And again, this is held with its shape by a wire, which is covered again. All right. That's the front and the back. Next question. I do have notes. Did I say I have notes? I have notes. Um, how do I wear my hat? For that one, I'm going to have to show you on the dome crown because I know that my head is too small for the tapered crown. All right. So the dome crown and the tapered crown are always going to be worn. No, I don't want to say always. Almost always going to be worn parallel to the ground. All right, I know a lot of people want to wear it tilted back. If anything, you're going to tilt it forward just a tiny, tiny bit. 
but the general rule is parallel to the ground. You see this in fashion plates, you see this in CDVs. The brim of the hat is parallel to the ground. Now, you'll also notice, especially from this angle of my camera, that the hat is much higher than a modern hat. The edge of the crown, where the crown and the brim meet, is just about where my hairline is. It's not lower where a modern hat would be. Now, the huge advantage there is you don't end up with a hat line on your forehead. <laughs> that is one thing I do not like about modern millinery. So, easy thing to remember there. All right. Oh, while we're at it, why don't we do some measuring? Um, if you were measuring for a modern hat, you would measure down here. But no, we're going to measure up higher. All right, see how I have my tape measure up at my hairline? We're going to bring this around, and that measurement for me is 21. All right, I can tell you the measurement further down is closer to 22. Now, if I have a 21-inch head, I am going to look for a hat an inch to an inch and a half smaller. So, 19 and a half to about a 20. In all reality, I know that I can wear about a 19 and a half to a 20 and a half comfortably. All right? If you end up with a hat that's about the same size as your head, there's a really easy solution is you can take a ribbon or another lining and line your hat. That is how you can make a larger hat fit a smaller head. Much easier than you can make a smaller hat fit a larger head. So I prefer to use a cotton sateen around the inside of my brim. All right, let me show you where that would go. Let's see here. On the camera, if I can hold this. So I would put it right here on the edge. And that would go all the way around the inside. The seam of this would go in the back. Now, of course, you could line that fully uh, with like a cotton lawn, um, an organdy, an organza, a taffeta. There's a number of fabrics you could use. All right. Next question. How do I keep the hat on my head? All right. Ribbon ties. So, my decorated hats come with ribbon ties. I put them on the sides, Oops, find the end here, of the hat, okay, on either side. And this ribbon, let's see if I can take this this way here. All right. So, we'll pretend the ribbon is attached. Pretend my hair is arranged in the back. I would have this ribbon attached to the hat right above my ears or just behind my ears. I would bring the ribbon back and I would tie it under my coiffure or dressed hair and it will help it stay on. Yep, there goes the hair. And this technique does work fairly well. Uh, of course, I would not trust it in high, high winds, um, but it does help. It's kind of the hat's version of a stay. Now, you will see larger decorative ribbons on the inside of some very fashionable hats. Those are not considered the tying ribbons. Um, oh, and you can also, instead of using the ribbon, use elastic. I've seen numerous hats already with remnants of um, like snipped off bits of elastic. So I'm guessing the elastic cord shriveled up and died and was just trimmed away. All right. Mm -hmm -hmm. Um, fit and measure. Oh, that's a good one. So the next one on the list, put that over there move my wire, is where do the ribbons and flowers go? So, I almost have too many things out here. Um, here's a pretty green ribbon. Now this is a 
silk ribbon. Let's bring this over here. Now this is the back of the hat, so let's turn it so that the front is towards you. I would put the front of the ribbon in the front of the hat, and in the back is where the bow would go. All right, so the back is where the bow would go. Now if I were to put flowers on this hat, I would most likely put them either in the front here, now these I'm just sitting down. I loved these flowers. They have a special little home in a basket. Eventually they will go on them on it. I'm trying to reach the other one. Okay, they could go center front, or you could arrange them off to one side. So either symmetrically in the front for the flowers, or asymmetrically from the front to the one side. And now asymmetrically, you could also do your feathers as well, a nice plume. Let's set these back. All right. Now while we're talking about ribbon, let's take a moment to talk about what ribbon is available to us. Uh, we can get fairly easily um, silk taffeta and silk satin ribbon up to about two inches wide in solid colors. Uh, this is a soft ribbon, can be very beautiful, works nicely on millinery. What is currently not available are currently made silks in the many plaids and prints. Um, comparatively, you can buy those as vintage, or you can buy those, actually do that backwards, vintage or reproduction. Um, one thing I do shy away with now, shy away from, is using antique silk ribbons because the fibers can be dry and when they are dry they become delicate and they can shatter quickly. While a ribbon may look gorgeous as it's first attached to a hat or a bonnet, as soon as, it is, as it's tied or packed away for a little bit, it can come out of a bow in pieces. I actually had that happen to me with a winter bonnet that I wore to Ag Fair one year. I, I tied the ties, it looked cute all day, kept me warm, and then when I untied it in the afternoon, evening, it was in pieces. So I do shy away from using um, many antique ribbons. Checking my box to see what other samples I've got in this one. Just grabbed one of the boxes. Oh, these are all silks, okay. down here. Oh, more narrow silks. Okay, so those are for another project. All right, I think that covers each of the questions on this list. If you have additional questions for straw hats or straw bonnets, please let me know. Ask them either in the comments on YouTube or the comments on WordPress, on the blog, and I will add them to the next um, millinery, Q&A, fact questions, whatever you want to call it. All right, until next time, enjoy the rest of your week and your weekend. Bye-bye, all.